Well, my name is Ahmed. Um, I study chemistry, biology, maths and sociology. Um, I'm in my first year of A-level and after that I go to uni. Well, hopefully I'll have a career path in medicine, but I'm not tr really sure about it, so still back deciding. There's many different ways that you can get into zookeeping. Um, I obviously did a biology A-level that led on to a zoology degree um, and then sort of did some volunteering and got in that way. Lots of people do animal care courses and come in that way. But um, I found that my ways like, kept my options open of where I want to go and what I want to do. Is he chewing your mic there? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what kind of A-levels? Is it, it has to be biology and what else? Biology is definitely the most helpful yeah. um, in the zoo environment. I've actually got a chemistry and physics degree oh, okay. as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, but biology is used more than those two. We obviously um, do a lot of conservation in other countries. So it's really helpful to know about different kinds of conservation work, which is covered in a lot of the biology A-level. Yeah. It's also really helpful to um, have an idea what the vets are talking about when they come along using their, their big words. Yeah. Biological sciences is, is in some ways the most obvious yeah. degree programme, but there's also biochemistry, biomedical sciences, and more specialist degree programmes like neuroscience. Biology is a very broad subject and, and a lot of what we do these days is trying to bring different strands of it together and look at the interrelations and the connections. But uh, also quite a few of our students will go on to do something completely different. Uh, the last couple of years a few of them have gone on to do law degrees. So how has biology helped you in your profession? Well, um Intellectual property law is dealing with inventions and because I have a sort of biological background I deal with mainly sort of biological and chemical inventions and so fundamentally whenever I have a, a, a client or have to deal with something I have to understand the technology and so having a scientific background and a particular biological and chemical background you know, to be able to sort of read uh, our applications here or, or read a patent or something you know, I can actually understand what's going on. So the average day for a keeper, you get up early yeah. and we get here for 8 o'clock and then the team all kind of get together yeah. and the reason we all get together first thing in the morning is to all discuss what happened yesterday. Oh, okay. um, so we can all tell maybe if something was lame or something hasn't eaten, we can pass that information on to the different keepers that are working that day. Then we all go off to our own sections, we give everything, check everything's okay, we haven't had any problems overnight. Then we start going around yeah, giving the breakfast, then we kind of got to get the place looking nice and clean before the, the visitors and the public get in. So the next few hours will be when we start picking up the poo oh, <laughs> and that okay. kind of thing, raking it up, cleaning the windows. How is it like working with animals? Do you find it challenging? Or? It's, it is challenging, every day is a challenge, every day is quite different as well, but as you can imagine it's quite rewarding and, and relatively fun as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> So what other kind of subjects in A-level would help? Well, I did biology and chemistry, um, and chemistry really helps, because obviously when, you know, when you're talking about drug development, it, it quite often comes down to particular chemical f chemicals. Mm. And physics can also help in terms of um, medical devices. Mm. Um, you see, here at the Trust, you know, we are looking at sort of healthcare benefits, and so we are very much focused on sort of medical, um, medical applications, so drugs, devices, vaccines. What's the kind of average wage? Don't mind me asking. <laughs> <laughs> the average um, from the London universities, or from us, is, is, is about 20,000 a year. Okay. If you want a career that uses your biological interests or knowledge, that will usually require you to get at least a master's qualification yeah. or a PhD. What I would say is that if, you, if, you, if you're not going for medicine or dentistry, where well, obviously there's a career at the end of it, yeah. um, if you're doing a, a pure subject, yeah. like biology or biochemistry, uh, do what you enjoy, because okay. what, whatever kind of job you're looking for, the better the degree that you come out with, yeah. the better your chance of getting one. And yeah. at this level, you, you will do best at, at, at the subject that you're really interested in. If you don't mind me asking, what's the average wage after three years? When I started, which was over 20 years ago, um, it was, I mean, it was competitive uh, with um, bankers after a couple of years and um, you know, junior, uh, junior doctors, that sort of thing. So, you know, the, the rewards are great, <laughs> um, but you work hard for it, but it's really interesting work as well. When you start 
it's it's pretty low depending where you work. Obviously, this is a better place than some of the others. Um, it's for for where you are, you you can live on it, and you can also <laughs> um, um, you can make your way up. You can become a senior keeper. Then you can go into specialising on certain aspects. You might want to go into conservation in the field. Now I know there's more careers available if I take a science degree, like neuroscience, biochemistry, all of that. Because I didn't know about all these career paths either, so yeah, they could could help a lot of people deciding what they want to do.